Hello everyone and welcome back to my journey of creating a city builder game from scratch using my own engine. I'm documenting the entire process and this week I'm going to be implementing the main menu and also getting started with some road placing mechanics. So just a quick reminder, last time I was working on the UI library and the text rendering and since then I have now integrated the text with the UI library so I can now add text into UI panels and the text also reacts properly when the display size or the panel size changes and I can either set it to maintain its original font size like it's doing here or I can set the text to scale up with the parent panel like it's doing here. So that's the text system and the UI system pretty much finished and I'm now going to make use of it by making a main menu for the game. I just wanted to add one final thing to the UI system before I move on and that is an improved animation system which makes it easy for me to add nice transitions to UI elements for when they get displayed and hidden. And I can show you a quick example of how I use this system in the code. So up here I've created a new transition and the system's quite customizable so there are lots of different ways of doing this but here I've just created a very simple slide and fade transition which affects the X position and the transparency of a UI component. Then down here, I've created a load of buttons and I've simply added that transition, the slide and fade transition to each of the buttons. So if I go ahead and run this, you can see the buttons here. And then whenever I hide or display them, they now automatically carry out that sliding, fading transition. Another thing I can do is I can add a delay to each of the transitions. Um, so here I'm just going to use the button number to give each of the buttons um, a slightly different delay to their transition and that's going to get applied to when they're displayed and to when they're hidden and if I now go ahead and run that um, you can see that the display animation is now slightly more interesting and as I said the whole system is very customizable so I can create much more interesting and complex transitions if I just take the time to do it. So now that I've got the basic UI library set up, I'm going to start work creating the main menu for this game. And for that, the first thing that I need is some buttons. So I've just been programming the basic code for buttons, normal buttons and toggle buttons. And you can see a very simple example of that in the game here. And for this particular implementation, you can see that I'm just changing the color of the buttons when they get moused over or toggled but I could just have easily have added some sort of transition using the new animation system, which I'll do now. And if I go ahead and run that, you can see that when I mouse over the buttons, they now do this nice little transition. So I think that's pretty much everything I need to create the main menu now. So I'll do that this afternoon. But first I'm going into the city to have some lunch. Back to work now and I've been getting started with the main menu so I've added this placeholder background image which fades in and out whenever I press the escape key and I've also just programmed these best fit constraints for positioning the image so that no matter how you resize the display the image never gets stretched and it also gets cropped so that it always fits the display in the best way possible. I'm pretty much finished with this placeholder main menu now so I've got the buttons using the button code that I was writing earlier um, the play button works and takes you into the game and the UI does a nice animation using the whole transition system that I was working on um, I haven't really implemented these buttons here but I have added support for more pages in the main menu um, which I can then fill in when the time comes and also the quit button works and takes you out of the game so I can finally move on from the UI for now it's been taking a while because every time I come across something new that I haven't implemented yet, I, I first want to add general support for it into the UI library, um, like I did with the buttons. So everything's taking a little bit longer now, but obviously over time the UI library is going to grow and grow and things will get quicker and quicker to implement. It is 8 o'clock on a very nice sunny morning and my plan for today is to quickly implement some stuff to do with game states and then I'm going to be finally moving on to some actual gameplay mechanics 
and I'm going to be planning out some of the basic town building features. So as I said, first up I had to do some work on game states, which is mostly to do with the inputs doing different things when the game is in different states. So for example, at the moment I'm in the game and I'm using the mouse to control the camera, but if I bring up the main menu I no longer want the mouse to be controlling the camera, it should be interacting with the UI, and I don't want to be clicking in the main menu and accidentally moving the camera in the background. And the same when I'm in the game, if I was trying to scroll down a list in one of the UIs, I wouldn't want the camera to be zooming in and out. So I just wrote a system that sorts out which system in the game currently has control of the user inputs. And with that, if we have a look in Trello, that is now the end of update 0.0.2. Finally, it's been a bit of a long one because it basically involves the entire UI library, so hopefully the next updates are going to be a little bit quicker. The next thing that I'm going to be working on is splitting up the world into a sort of grid system, which will then allow me to create the placement mechanics, um, which will let you build a town. So that's what I've been planning out here, just working out how it's all going to work. Um, also doing a lot of thinking about how the roads are going to work, because they're obviously going to be quite connected with the grid system. And yeah, I'm going to start work on programming this this afternoon, and then hopefully very soon I finally won't have to look at this empty green plane anymore. Speaking of planes, I live near an airport, brilliant segue, and um, I've heard that there are some spots that you can go to and see the planes quite close as they take off and land, so I thought today for my lunch break, something different, go and watch some planes. So after that rather random aeroplane interlude, I've been back to working on the grid system and I've pretty much finished it already. Um, I decided to use a quad tree, which means that the world is split up into four grid squares and then each of those squares is split up into four smaller ones and each of those is split up into four smaller ones and so on and so on, all the way down to the smallest grid size. And quad trees are great for a few reasons, I'll talk more about that in future videos when I start actually making use of this quad tree. And um, I also just implemented a way to determine which grid square the mouse cursor is currently over. And you can see that working here. I've just been doing a bit more in-depth planning for the roads and trying to work out how exactly I'm going to implement them. Um, they're not just going to be textures on the floor, they are actually going to be 3D models, like you can see here, with the raised pavements. Um, obviously the roads need to be able to connect up seamlessly with each other and they also need to be able to connect up with pathways and with houses and buildings so it's going to be interesting, it's going to be a bit of a challenge. Um, I've also just been planning out how I'm going to represent the roads in the code as a sort of network which the traffic's going to use for route finding so lots to do and uh, I'm probably going to be working on this for the next week or so. So I've just been doing a bit of work on the roads, just playing around with a few things, trying a few things out, but this is going to take a while so I think I'm going to save it for the next video because it's been quite a while since the last video went out. Sorry things have been a bit slow recently with the videos, um, there's just been a lot of setup work to do which isn't particularly exciting to show in the videos and also because it's the start of the project there's been lots of, lots of planning, lots of big design decisions to make. Um, I actually got this book recently which has been helping with that, a friend recommended it to me, it's a really good book, but I have been just kind of taking things quite slow and steady to start with this time, because in Equilinox by the end of the project the code had become a little bit unmanageable, so this time around I really want to make sure I structure everything very nicely and make the code very flexible and easy to use throughout the whole of development. But a lot of the big systems have already been set up now, so I'm hoping that development should start to speed up soon. For this week though, that is going to be it, so thank you guys very much for watching this video, do subscribe if you haven't already, have a fantastic week, and I will see you all next time.